Folks, Canadian Prepper here. Got a lot of important updates for you today. We got PSAs coming out from New York telling them to get their bug out bags ready because nuclear Armageddon might be right around the corner. We got North Korea threatening to take on the whole world. We got this thing flaring up in the South China Sea, which ain't looking good in the next 48 hours. I guess we're going to know. Is World War III going to start a little sooner than expected? Anyways, let's just get right to it. It is sweltering out here, guys. 50 degrees Celsius with the Humidex expected in the coming days. I'm not going to tell you where I am. That's for me to know and for you to find out. But all I'm saying is you need to have a plan as to how you're going to endure the elements when it all collapses. Make sure you have a way to either heat yourself or cool yourself because I'm telling you, keeping cool in this kind of weather is going to be a challenge for a lot of people. Now, if you haven't seen our most recent video where I take Tesla to task and I go to town on Mr. Elon Musk himself, go and check it out. It's a fun video. At once, Teslas are such a double-edged sword, the most amazing vehicles on the road to drive. However, some big brother caveats that you all need to take into account if you plan on getting one. Now, let's just dive right into this. So the NYC Emergency Management Services have released a new tweet. I believe it was a tweet. Maybe it was an Instagram. Basically, they're advising everybody to have a go bag ready with everything you need in case you need to pack up the kids and leave the house at a moment's notice. Now, they're not telling us for what, you know. I mean, it's very... It's very rare that in a city like New York that they would advise the entire population, you need to understand, the entire population to have a go bag ready. Could you imagine evacuating a city like New York, which to the best of my knowledge, I've never been there, but I'm assuming there's a lot of bridges, there's a lot of choke points where congestion is going to be rife and you're not going to be able to get out of there unless you have some kind of boat or access to a helipad on one of those big skyscrapers in Manhattan. My friends, you are going to be landlocked. Now, this coming on the heels of a nuclear PSA that they just released. Well, we are, by some expert analyst accounts, at the height of nuclear war risk. Higher than we've ever been before in previous history. Because of all the tensions around the world, be it in the Middle East, Southeast China Sea... Ukraine, Russia, etc. So this is this is strange to me. Are they just trolling us at this point? Are they just trying to see how much attention they can garner? Because remember, that last PSA really put New York emergency management on the map. That was shared probably millions of times all around the world. People are taking it as a harbinger for what may be to come. Doesn't really look good. I'm glad that they are encouraging people to prepare, but typically... Typically, you're talking about shelter in place. Remember, the government are the ones who said duck and cover, right, when it all goes down. They're not the ones who typically say get a go bag ready. So what does this all mean? Nobody knows. Are they just prepping us for the next uh, Hurricane Sandy or whatever the case? Who knows? But on the heels of a video where you're talking about nuclear annihilation, then uh, I think, you know, people should take this seriously. This may well be a harbinger for what's to come as you have Nancy Pelosi who seems hell-bent on heading to Taiwan. Now, I don't get it, guys. Have these people not heard of Zoom? I mean, there was this technology invented long ago called FaceTime. You know, anybody can talk on the internet. You can do 3D. You can do uh, holograms now. You can do everything. Why do you need to go there? That's the question. I mean, is it just to make a point? Is it just to show solidarity? Is it just for the purpose of antagonizing the, I don't know, what are we calling China? It's not the bear, the dragon? Is that what it is? Is it just to antagonize the dragon? What's the point, is what I'm trying to say. Because Xi has given a fiery warning. His Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and of course everything who goes through them, first gets, you know, passed by Xi to say, he says those who play with fire will perish by it, okay? And then at the same time, you have the U.S., assembling a military plan to protect Pelosi. Okay, and this is at the same time China is saying, well, we might just have to make a no-fly zone within this region if they continue to uh, push on this. Again, they could just use Zoom. There's absolutely no reason why Nancy Pelosi to haul her old ass down to Taiwan to instigate a fight. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. 
Maybe there's some, you know, they're worried about nonverbal communication, not being, you know, the message not being transmitted. They need to shake hands. But I thought COVID was a thing. Anyways, uh, this is not looking good because the Pentagon is going to be sending additional ships, aircraft, and surveillance systems to protect House Speaker Nancy Pelosi if, big if, she proceeds to with her plan uh, to Taiwan, which is purely symbolic, as we have established. So there is absolutely no reason to do this. They're sending an aircraft carrier. Remember, China has hypersonic weapons. They could easily sink an aircraft carrier if they wanted to. And they are warning of a forceful response if they do this. So I personally do not see what the purpose is. And now China is going to be holding snap military drills in response to this U.S. carrier entering the South China Sea. So you have... Chinese ships pursuing American ships, threatening to institute a no-fly zone near Taiwan at the height of U.S.-China tensions, worse than it's ever been before. Okay, you have North Korea at the exact same time, on the exact same day, saying that they are ready to use nuclear weapons against their aggressors. Remember, nothing gets said by the North Koreans that first hasn't been approved by the Chinese. North Korea are essentially the attack dog for the Chinese. They're the gatekeepers, the literal gatekeepers in the east of China. Okay, they are, remember, there, there never has been a ceasefire or a declaration of peace on the Korean peninsula. There was an armistice, meaning they agreed to stop fighting, but this was not a cessation of the war itself. So the war between the North and South is still on. It's only a matter of time before it begins to flare up. Now, why would North Korea be providing this rhetoric at this point in time? I mean, has there been provocations by the South to the North? Uh, or is this China's way of sending a message to the United States saying, look, you got, I don't know, however many 50,000 troops or something like that in uh in uh, South Korea, you got however many troops you got in Japan that's still under uh, U.S. occupation. You know, maybe we'll just light that up if you decide to send old Pelosi, who uh, recently got over COVID apparently, to Taiwan to go and instigate a fight. Not looking good. All these things happening within the last 24 hours. This is not old news. This is fresh off the press news. Okay? Okay. So, and at the same time, okay, <laughs> getting to the other World War III front. And this is just crazy because, I mean, it's hot as hell out here. Beach bums everywhere. People just walking around aimlessly. Not a clue as to what the hell is going on in the world. Meanwhile, all the playing pieces are being moved into position for a major, major war on all fronts escalating. The leader in Donetsk is calling on Russia to conquer all of Ukraine all of Ukraine, Kiev, Chernev, Poltova, Odessa, Dnipro, Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, Lutsk. They're saying that it, today it's time to liberate the Russian cities, which were founded by Russians, all of which the aforementioned. And uh, Denis uh, Pushlin wrote in an Instagram message on the occasion of the anniversary of liberation from the Soviet army of the city of Brest in Belarus. Kremlin strongman Vladimir Putin has repeatedly denied the existence of Ukraine, arguing it has been artificially separated from Russia. So that should give you a sense of where this is all going. Now, a little brief interlude here, guys. Gas prices are down. That's nice. Is it demand destruction? Is it the government, you know, pushing the panic button and, you know, doing something to uh, bring down demand? Is it the uh, government strong arming the, the oil companies and the refine. I don't know what it is, but hey, we'll take it. The market is looking a little greener in the last couple days. I personally think the staircase is still descending downwards, and even if it wasn't, inflation basically erases any gains that we're getting in the stock market right now. But you know what? There's there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But as has been the case for the last few years, usually that just means that we're reaching a new plateau of uh, SHTF, a new, you know, uh, that's typically what happens. Things are bad, they're bad, and then they start looking better, and then they reach this support level of shittiness, and then from there, we go even lower. 
anyways, let's get right back to this here. So we got Kiev now threatening to attack Russian territory, who will probably be getting more HIMARS missile systems. The United States has about 400 plus of these HIMARS systems at their disposal. I believe they've committed up to another 15 more of the systems to the Ukrainians. Uh, this, this fight it must be real important. I'm not sure why, but apparently it's real important. Maybe it's just all, maybe it's all to do with energy. Maybe that's what it is, because Ukraine is kind of at the, uh, the centerpiece of the crossroads, if you will, of the energy exchange between Europe, Middle East, um, Russia, of course, and it's strategically useful for NATO. But I, I just still don't understand what all the fuss is about here. Maybe we need the aliens to invade now. That way, we can all look up to the sky instead of at each other, and we can all say, you know what, I think we got bigger problems here. Let's just uh, deal with this, because it's not looking good. It seems like this is a runaway freight train, and there's no stopping it at this point. Anyways, uh, the Ukrainians are now threatening to attack Russian territory, and of course, by Russian territory, they mean uh, Crimea, they mean literal Russian territory, Okay, which, of course, is another red line. For Russia. Perhaps more significant, the... Uh, what is happening here? The United States is threatening to deem Russia a... What do they call it? A terrorist state. Okay? And uh, this is very, very important. Because this is a big, big red line for the Russians. If they deem Russia a terrorist state, I'm not sure what the implications are of this necessarily, but they want to label them a sponsor of state terrorism. A non-binding resolution has been unanimously approved by the Senate. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this means in terms of policy, but I know that the Russians view it as a red line. So this is something to watch out for. Many, many red lines in the sand being crossed. I think, guys, this may well be our last uh, summer where we sit on the beaches and uh, we're not sitting in the bunkers. EU is heading for a war economy, according to the Hungarian leader Orban. And uh, he lambasted an EU plan to reduce ca gas consumption by 15%. 15% reduction in gas production is a much bigger reduction in overall economic output. It's not going to be a nice winter for people in Europe. Survival Lily made a video yesterday talking about, you know, supermarkets advising people to stock up. And when you know, when that's happening, you know it's bad. You know it's getting real bad. I would encourage people in Europe, do not wait. Go and check out what Selco, SHDF, has to say about surviving long-winded SHDF in Europe. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty around here either, which is why I've been networking with some people in order to try to establish a plan for when everything goes south. And I've been giving it a lot of thought and consideration. And my friends, you need, you absolutely need, if you're planning for the long haul survival and not just getting your bug out bags and running off into the woods, which won't be feasible for the majority of people who do not know how to survive more than a week in the wilderness, then you need to get to know your community. You need to build those relationships. You need to foster constructive relationships. You need to know who's who who has what skill set, who's going to be useful. Because the fact of the matter is, preppers, as much as there are some who want to be king of the castle, who want to be king of SHTF, this is a burden of responsibility that you are just going to have if you are a preparedness-minded individual. Not, you know, saying that I, I personally would not want that responsibility, but it's a responsibility that likely you are just going to naturally fill that void, that power vacuum, because there's going to need to be somebody who's trying to organize. Now, you can rely on the mayors and you know your municipal government in order to try to arbitrate these types of things, but we all know how government works, and if they weren't prepared beforehand, then uh, you know how you know how trustworthy can they be? when it all hits the fan. So have a plan for your community. We need to start thinking in communal terms. I know that doesn't jive well with packing your bug out bag and going out and fighting zombies and that whole romanticized nonsense, but this is practical preparedness, all right? Now, what else do we got to talk about here, my friends? Lots of stuff going on 
in the world today. You know what? I think we're actually going to conclude there because I think we've covered a lot of bases. Uh, Russia did secure another power plant in Ukraine, the second largest power plant. This is not a nuclear one. I believe it's coal or uh, thermal, possibly, hydrothermal. Or what do they call it? Yeah, hydrothermal. Uh, not hydrothermal. Um, geez, what the hell? I can't remember. It, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know what it is because we've talked about it in videos before. The heat that's generated by the earth that, you know, you turn into, get a, turn a turbine, whatever the case might be. Anyways, yeah, they've uh, taken over another power plant and uh, the power, the lights are still on in Kiev. So that says something. They must still want Zelensky to sign some sort of document. But with all these red lines being established and being crossed, I don't know how much time we have left. This North Korean threat to use nuclear weapons is seems rather unprovoked. And the only reason why I think they would do this is if they were advised by China to do so. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please go check out that recent video we did where we're taking Tesla to task. I had a lot of fun making that video. These things are a mixed blessing, guys. Okay, until you got to drive a Tesla to hate it in the right way. I mean, it's an amazing piece of technology. Amazing. And I know the Californians are saying, oh, you guys can't plug in your Teslas because the grid's going to go down because it's too damn hot. We can't power all these air conditioners. We need to put air conditioners before your Teslas. I get all, I, 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 I understand the, the contradiction of using a coal-fired plant to power your Tesla. But when you get into a Tesla and you drive it and you hit that pedal and you feel the G-force, man, it's a beautiful thing. But it's also Big Brother's wet dream, and we talk about all that stuff in that video. Go check it out, guys. One of the funnest videos I personally ever did, and uh, I just think, you know, it's good to look at the pros and cons. It's always a double-edged sword with technology, just like these smartphones, just like this social media platform it allows us to connect, but it also allows us and every one of our thoughts to be surveilled. So think about that. Right? It's always, you can't have your cake and eat it too. But all I'm going to say is, do not get complacent. Keep prepping because any moment now, any moment now, that SHTF train is going to hit us like a ton of bricks. Thanks for watching, my friends. Stay safe. Canadian Prepper out.